two years ago, after an argument with his girlfriend, Cassandra Perkins, Jovan Belcher shot her multiple times, killing the mother of his then three-month-old daughter, Zoe. I believe our suspect is uh, Chief Squire, so whoever goes over there, do caution. Belcher then drove to the Chief's practice facility, where he shot himself to death in front of team officials in the parking lot. I've got a sighting from the park. 336, cut off sirens immediately. There's no denying the facts. The NFL is now only beginning to pay the price for a cover-up that's lasted decades, and the process costs people their lives and the ability to live a productive life when the cheering is done. In a shocking update on their original documentary about brain injuries to football players, Frontline on PBS now reports that 76 of 79 deceased players whose brains were available for study showed they suffered from degenerative brain disease, an affliction the NFL for years stated was no big deal. Pleasure to be joined on midpoint, by, midpoint rather, by Chris Nowinski, a former professional wrestler with the WWE, a Harvard grad. He also wrote the book Head Games, Football's Concussion Crisis. Chris, thanks for joining us. And when you look at what we have seen here, and now the note that KC linebacker Jovan Belcher did suffer from CTE, is there any doubt in your mind that after years of ignoring this, the National Football League bears some responsibility in the deaths of these players? Well, uh, when, you know, when I wrote Head Games, Football's Concussion Crisis in 2006, you know, the, my belief at that time was the NFL was suppressing this information and keeping it from getting not only to their players, but to the public. Uh, and we do appreciate that brain trauma and brain disease can lead to these sorts of behaviors, including violence. So um, this, is a, this is a big issue, and uh, I'm glad the NFL has made some changes, but you know, they're going to have to continue to stay on top of this. When we talk about staying on top of it, though, they have indeed, and you want to use the phrase, this has been a cover-up because their own doctors said that there was nothing wrong with this. The PBS documentary on Frontline nailed it right on the wall here. So when you look at this right now, are we then looking at maybe the next 10 or 20 years where we are going to have, and I hate to be blunt, but football players who are going to lose memories, lose motor control, other violent acts, it simply is something we're going to live with now for decades because of their ineptitude. Well, I mean, that's a, it's a good way to put it. Uh, as part of the NFL lawsuit in the settlement, if the settlement goes forward, the, the actuaries that got together and looked at the data predicted that one in three former NFL players will eventually develop cognitive issues uh, and, and dementia. And that doesn't even include the people like Belcher who are just showing uh, behavioral issues and not necessarily cognitive problems. So we will continue to see this happen uh, because, you know, as much as we'll try to intervene, uh, we won't be able to. And so... Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be tough to watch now that everyone knows what to look for and can tie those those dots together, or connect those dots. Chris, I only have about a minute left. Let's connect some dots here. High school kids, kids who begin playing football at the age of eight years old, up through high school, college, and now the pros. Had we known about this decades ago, something could have been done about those kids. Doesn't this dip down into the children who are still they're trying to work with it, but still being injured to this day because of this cover up? You know, yes, I mean, that, that's the biggest question that we have is that while maybe the NFL can continue because the players are old enough, they have informed consent, the children do not. And we have to look at getting hit in the head as a risk factor for dementia. It's exposure. We're exposing kids to dementia. And so we have to rethink how we play these games. And the NFL is actually, you know, subsidizing little kids playing tackle football uh, and, and the training of them. And so... They have to really consider their responsibility on this. Does the NFL now face the possibility that this game will be radically changed in less than 10 years? It should be radically changed for children. And I think that's a reality that we're going to start pushing for in a bigger way, that little kids should not be playing tackle football. They should be playing flag seven on seven. And, and football is really a man's game, not a boy's game. Chris, I have read the book. It is a wonderful book, fascinating stuff inside of it. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll look forward to talking about this more in the future. Thank you. All right. Next hour on Midpoint, we'll be joined by former Congressman Ron Paul, who thinks the time is right for parts of America to secede from the union. And after the break, the one man who believes he is the answer for America in finding that new attorney general. Telling it like it is is next on Midpoint. <laughs>